Let's take a look now at simple magnifiers. You've probably played with one of these. It's very uh, basic. It's just a single converging lens that you can use to make something look bigger. This never gets old. Let's see, I've got this larger diameter converging lens here, and I've also got this one. And I'm noticing as, as I hold this up, I believe I'm forming an image of the lamp to the right of the table. See if I can focus this a little better. Yeah, well, that is, you are in fact looking at an image of the light bulb, but there's no interesting features on it. So all you really see is a circle of light. I'll come back to that. Let's review the, the action of a converging lens when you place the object inside the focal length. I'll do a couple examples here. Converging lens. Converging lens. And I will give this a rather short focal length. How about two centimeters on either side? And first I'll place an object halfway between, oops, halfway between the lens itself and the focal point. And I will very quickly draw my principal rays, undeviated ray through the center, parallel ray that refracts through the focal point, and then a ray that would come from the focal point, or it's, it's leaving the tip of the arrow in the same direction as if it came from the near focal point, it will come out parallel. And you can see that if I extend all these lines backwards, didn't do a great job, but they appear to be diverging from a single point. So here's the object. Oh yeah, it's that familiar result. If you put the object, I meant to say, here's the image. If you put the object halfway between the lens and the focal point, your image actually comes out at the focal point, which is interesting. This is an upright image. It's virtual, which means the image distance is negative. Let me repeat this now over here. I'll use the same focal length. You know, I'm going to run out of room, so let, I'll actually redraw it down here. Here's the optical axis. Here's my lens. I went with the focal length of two centimeters, so let me repeat that. Focal point on two centimeters or on either side of the lens at two centimeters. This time though, I will put the, the object quite a bit closer to the focal point. Not right on top of it yet, but this ought to be good. And I will make the, the object rather short. We'll see why in a moment, because we're going to get a lot of enlargement. Principal rays. Undeviated right to the center. Mm, right. And that ray looks like it's coming from back here. Parallel ray refracted through the far focal point. That ray looks like it's coming from back here. And lastly, a ray moving off in the same direction as if it had come from the near focal point, and we should find it looks like it's coming back here. Okay, now our image is quite a bit further from the lens. It's more enlarged. So S prime is still a negative number, but now the, the absolute value of that number is larger than it was before. This image is much closer. I think you get the idea, the closer you put the object to the focal point, the farther out your virtual image will be and the taller it's going to be. So the idea behind a simple magnifier is to basically put your object right on top of the focal point, but still inside. So just inside the focal point, if you did that, this, uh, this image would go out to infinity. That's not hard to show. 
use the thin lens equation. Let the object distance equal F. It's not, a, like I said, you can't put it exactly at F because then your image would be fuzzy. You should try it. Um, maybe I can do that here, as a matter of fact. If I, if I put this, uh, how do I get this? Let me tilt this up. Signal all the uh, garbage on my desk here. If I move the object far enough away, okay, I'll come back to that. There's supposed to be a point where it just goes blurry. The object distance is basically F. These cancel. How is the reciprocal of image distance supposed to be zero? That's only possible if your image distance has an absolute value of infinity. So this, this image will show up infinitely far away. And then the magnification, remember the magnification is negative S prime over S. That would also go to infinity because you're, oops. If this is F, remember you put the object at the focal point. F is, you know, just a few centimeters. And this comes out to be negative infinity, negative, negative is positive. An infinite magnification, does that even make sense? That seems to suggest that I could take the letter E here and scale it up infinitely. Uh, so that it's, I don't know, it's only, it doesn't matter what it is, right? If you scale any number by infinity, it's now infinity. That doesn't make any sense because it's clearly not infinitely large because I use this magnifying glass. So what's going on? Well, there's a difference between how tall something is and how large it appears to be in your field of view. So take your eyeball. There's your iris, pupil. the back of your eyes, the retina, whatever you're looking at, your book likes to go with these little trees. This thing could be one inch tall. If it was a little weed, it could be, you know, like a weed that grows in your, uh, your backyard. Or it could be 20 feet tall, it's an actual tree. No matter how large it actually is, you could make it appear to be very small by putting it far from you. So now's the time to talk about <coughs> angular size. Okay, the, um, the top of this tree is going to send out an infinite number of rays, if you want to think about it that way. And a whole bunch of these rays are going to refract at the surface of your eye and form an image on the back of your eyeball. But if you want to know where on the retina the image of this point appears, take the ray that passes through the center of your eye, the undeviated ray. Uh, a ray like this, coming out like this, would bend and then rejoin the first ray at this point. So all you need to do is look at that undeviated ray to figure out where the image of this point appears on the back of your eye. Let's go at the bottom of the tree. Sure, it, it will also send out an infinite number of rays. Let's just look at the ray that passes through the center of your eye, undeviated. And you can see that this angle, theta, equals this angle. So it's really the angular size, which determines how big something appears to be in your field of view. Field of view. If you're standing at the base of a tall building, the angular size could be almost 90, right? It could be straight out, horizontal from your eyeball. Actually, if you're standing right up at the wall, it would be a little below the horizon, or more than just a little. Uh, now, let me show you what I'm talking about. If this is a tall building and you're standing here. A ray from your eye to the bottom of, bottom of the building goes like this, and a ray from your eye to the top of the building goes like this. Okay, so I guess this angle is approaching 180 degrees in your field of view. We're going to call this angular size. And instead of talking about the lateral, so-called lateral magnification, which we used for real images formed by lens. It was more appropriate to, uh, to use lateral magnification for real images. 
since we're, we're now looking at the virtual image formed by a magnifying glass, we're going to talk instead about angular magnification. So if you don't have a magnifying glass, without the magnifier, the largest you can make an object appear to be, let's say it's a, a coin, a, a quarter that you're going to look at up close, the biggest you can make that thing appear would be whatever angular size it has when you put it right up at your face. In other words, at your near point. And for many of us, that's something like 25 centimeters. So eyeball. Optical axis. Now, there's no lens here, aside from the lens that uh, represents your eyeball. If you put the object right here, okay, fine, I'll go with the tree. Yeah, that's misleading because that makes it seem like this thing's really far away. It's a, another little weed in your garden. Let's draw those undeviated rays. Well, the undeviated ray from the bottom of the, of the weed just goes right to the back of your eyeball. So this is the angular size. H is the actual height of the object. Uh, we're not dealing with any image here because we have not used a lens. And the distance here, this is as close as you can get it and still focus an image of it on your retina. In other words, this is your near point. This distance is your near point, which your book takes to be 25 centimeters. Could be less if you're young and have exceptional vision. Okay, so what's the angular size? Well, for small theta, remember, if you're looking at something like an eraser and you're holding it 25 centimeters from your face, even something this large at that distance from your face, the angular size is only a few degrees. And I think I've mentioned that the small angle approximation is valid even as high as 15 degrees. So theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta. This would be in radians, of course. This, this relation is only valid if you're measuring your angle in radians. Well, we've got a right triangle here. So the tangent of theta is very easy to determine. That would be height over near point. So when you look at something under normal circumstances, its angular size in radians is simply given by the lateral dimension of the object, whether it's a quarter or a flower or the nose on somebody's face, divided by how far it is from your face, which presumably would be the near point. And the idea is to make this bigger. If you want to magnify something, you need to increase its angular size. See where this is headed? Let's put the object, the little quarter or flower, let's put it just inside the focal point of a converging lens and instead of looking at something this big, will produce an image that is, granted, infinitely high, but it's also infinitely far away. Can you imagine that? Uh, mountains are, are really tall, but they're also generally very far from you, so they don't look that big. An infinitely tall image, which is infinitely far away, could actually have a finite angular size. And we seek to find that angular size. So let's draw a ray diagram. Okay. Well, I, I kind of don't really need to, do I? Because I've already, I've already done it here, basically. I guess I can make a slightly nicer diagram. Here's the converging lens from the side. But remember, we're just going to represent that with a vertical line. This vertical line through the middle of the magnifier, in other words, converging lens, that's where we draw the refraction of our principal rays. And I'll put the focal point a little farther out this time, about three inches. Okay. Just barely fits on the page there. And the idea is to place your object, which I'll represent with an arrow, just inside the focal point. I'll just put it practically on the focal point. Okay. And what happens? <clears throat> the parallel ray is refracted through the far focal point right over here. 
we've got the undeviated ray. And of course the ray, which would look like, which would go off in a direction as if it had come from the focal point. Well, wait a minute, that direction would have to be vertical. A ray going in this direction is never actually going to pass through the lens. So in this scenario, we cannot actually draw that, that ray. But remember, there's a bunch of other rays and theoretically, they would all intercept the lens and be focused back down where? Well, they don't converge anywhere over here. There is no real image on the side. The idea is that you've created a virtual image way the heck over here. Let's extend these rays backwards to see where they would appear to be diverging from. And it looks to me that the, these rays are parallel, which means they will never actually converge. Um, the idea is if they were going to, excuse me, not converge, I shouldn't use that word. Uh, we're talking about where they appear to diverge from. These rays will never intersect because they're parallel. Now, if they had been tilted towards each other ever so slightly, they would eventually intersect, but way back there. So think of it this way. These rays appear to diverge from some common point infinitely far away. That was the whole idea. And now um, you see this angle which I'll call theta, that's the, the angle right here. Isn't that exactly the same as this angle? Just look at the geometry of this diagram. Those two angles are the same. Now, if your eyeball is over here, your eyeball doesn't have to be at the focal point, that's irrelevant. It can be anywhere over here, really. You're, you're looking to this direction and you're seeing a bunch of rays coming at your eye as if they came from some infinitely tall, far, infinitely tall object, infinitely far away. I say object, but we're really talking about the image of this object. Okay, so the, this angle theta will be the angular size of the object you're looking at. Again, it's the limiting case of a really tall object really far away, like a mountain. Theta will be approximately equal to the tangent of theta. And I say approximate, but that's a really good approximation because again, with something like a mountain, uh, that is a small angle. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, can't you use a magnifying glass to, to look at something rather large? Like this letter M, it's not that small in my field of view. And once I magnify it, it's even larger. True, but you can think about it like, um, you're magnifying not just the letter M, but each little piece of the letter M. You know, just pick something, pick some small patch of that letter and imagine that you're magnifying that patch. That makes it clearer that the angle really would be small. And, you know, as you move towards the edges of the lens, you can see things get a little blurrier. Yeah, see how the, the M is fairly well focused. It's not distorted, but the I and the E look kind of messed up. So this small angle approximation doesn't work so well if you were to use an angle that goes from the center of this lens to the edge. But within the center, if you're just magnifying some little piece within the center, oh, that's a pretty good image there. That's actually the reflection of my lamp. Okay. So what is the tangent of theta here? That would be the actual height of the object. Remember, remember this is the object, it's the quarter or the flower. And how far is this from the lens? It's one focal length away. That's the whole point. The object has been placed at the focal point, H over F. And I'm gonna call this angle theta prime, actually. I believe your book calls it that. This is the angular size of the image produced by your simple magnifier, AKA converging lens. And now we've got a new definition of magnification. Angular magnification, your book uses a capital M to distinguish this type of magnification from the lateral magnification, which is little m. All we have to do is ask, what's the angular size of the image that you've made with your magnifying glass compared to the angular size that it would have if you just put it at your near point and didn't use a magnifying glass? That's it. Like, this is how big you can make it look without the use of a magnifying glass. This is how big you can make it look with the use of a magnifying glass. And we just plop in our expressions. We just found that theta prime is H over F. 
and the angle you would see, angular size you would see without the use of a magnifying glass is h over the near point. You can do the simplification. That comes out, oops, that's a p near point. That comes out to near point divided by f. There it is. That's the angular magnification of a simple magnifier. And you can crunch these numbers in your head easily. Um, this lens here, let's see if I can focus the, the light from this lamp. Now this lamp is not infinitely far away. Remember to determine the focal length, you really need a light source that's infinitely far away. Eh, close enough. So I'm gonna move this back and forth until that image is focused. I'm focusing really an image of the light bulb itself. And you can't see the lens, but I'm gonna estimate that something like mm, 20 centimeters away. So I just placed this lens about 20 centimeters away from the paper. Uh, for sunlight, it, I would probably need even less distance to focus. So let's say 15 centimeters, something like that. Okay, near point. Uh, if your near point is 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters divided by a focal length of 15 centimeters would give you a magnification of two. I guess that sounds reasonable. Let's see here. Does the letter M look twice as big when I pass the magnifying glass in front of it? Roughly? Okay, so that checks out. Maybe a little bit less than double the angular size. This is too much fun. I could just keep doing this for the next hour. Okay, uh, this is how it's presented in your book. There is another way of using a simple magnifier where you can get slightly greater magnification. And I should point out, uh, if your near point is 25 centimeters, 25 centimeters over, suppose you had a, a magnifying glass with a focal length of five centimeters. It would be five times the angular size. And you're starting to think, awesome, why don't I just get shorter and shorter focal lengths and I could blow something up by a factor of 20, 30, 100. And that's kind of exciting to think about, but you run into some problems. A simple converging lens, lens a single thin lens, um, there's a limit to how short that focal length can get. Eventually you run into these problems, uh, chromatic aberration and spherical aberration. The, the lens just wouldn't focus very well. So there is a, a limit to how good that can get. Also, there's, there's the limitations placed on us by the wave nature of light. Diffraction would become an issue. So at some point, it's just going to look super blurry. Even if you did have a, a perfect lens, it's, it's just the properties of, of light that would prevent you from magnifying by a factor of a thousand. So you're going to have to use combinations of lenses to get any better than that. I mean, have you ever thought about the fact that you can't look up images of an atom? Nobody's ever produced images of an atom using visible light. It just can't be done. There are images of atoms, but they use different types of waves, not visible light waves. Okay, how else can we use this simple magnifier to produce an image with a slightly larger angular size? The advantage of this method of using a magnifying glass, the method presented in the chapter, is that the image is infinitely far away. And remember, a normal person's eye doesn't require any accommodation to view an image at infinity. When miscellary muscles in your eye are in the relaxed state, that's when the lens within your eye is at its thinnest, thinnest, you're focusing images that are infinitely far away. So it's easy on the eye to use a magnifying glass in this manner. But if you're willing to strain just a little bit, it's not really straining, but if you're willing to um, focus with your eyes or accommodate, then you can get slightly greater magnification out of the thin lens or the converging lens. And the way you would do that is by placing the image not at infinity, but at your near point. Remember, if, if an object is placed at your near point, you can focus it on your retina. Your ciliary muscles are capable of squeezing that little lens inside your eyeball enough to make its focal length short enough that you do focus the image on the retina. So uh, for that to be the case, you, you would not want your object to be right on top of the focal point. Put it inside the focal point at just the right place so that the image shows up at your near point, which could be something like 25 centimeters. 
or even 15 centimeters. So let's analyze the angular magnification in this case. So this is going to be my theta prime now, right here. Yeah, look at this, this undeviated ray. Theta prime. Um, this is my image distance, or really the absolute value. I didn't really need to label this, did I? I could call this um, the absolute value of S prime is the near point. So I didn't really need to, to draw that twice, did I? This is the object distance. Okay, so I, I could also use this little triangle. I think I'll do that. See the, this little triangle here? You've got the actual height of the object, h, divided by the object distance. That would be the tangent of theta prime. Should have called that theta prime. So theta prime is approximately equal to the tangent theta prime. That would be the object height over the object distance. So we need to determine what this object distance is. I'll do that over here. We use the thin lens equation, one over S plus one over S prime equals one over F. So that means one over S is reciprocal of focal length minus one over S prime. But S prime is equal to the negative of the near point. Remember, since the image that comes out is a virtual image, the image distance needs to be a negative number, and I'm using NP to mean the absolute value of the near point. Okay, so one over S is going to be one over F. Uh, well, minus one over negative NP would be plus one over NP. Okay, so now we've got the reciprocal of the object distance. And that's actually what we want because the, the uh, angular size of the image, that's the same as the angular size of uh, where this object is. And don't be confused here. Um, this is not, if, if you're looking through the lens, here's the lens, you don't actually see this. What you see is the image. The rays that come out of here have been bent to appear that they come from here. So I, I really shouldn't talk about angular size of this because nobody sees this. Um, I'm really just talking about that angle. This angle is the same as this angle, and that angle is what we refer to as the angular size of the image. Okay, so tangent of theta prime, which is the same as theta prime, that would be h over s, or in other words, h times one over s. And we just determined that one over s is this. Great, now we've got an expression for the angular size of the image when you use the magnifying glass in such a way that the image is at your near point. And let's return now to the angular magnification. In this is, instance, it's theta prime over theta. We've got a new value for theta prime, but we're gonna use the same value of theta that we used before. You're still trying to compare how big the image appears now through the magnifying glass to how big it would be if you just placed it as close to your face as possible. In other words, the angular size without the use of a magnifying glass. Okay, well remember theta, the unmagnified angular size is h over np. Okay, so that's h times one over f plus one over the near point divided by h over near point and you see how the H's cancel? It's irrelevant whether you're looking at a penny or a quarter, that lateral dimension just disappears. The NP would come up in the numerator and we'd have to distribute the numerator, we'd have to distribute, excuse me, uh, near point to both terms within the numerator. And you'd have near point over focal point plus near point over near point would just be one. And you'll recognize that this first term that would be the, the angular magnification from the first method. That's the formula that we got previously. If you, if you use the magnifying glass in such a way that the image is at infinity, that is your magnification. So we've gone one greater than that. 
and I failed to mention your book talks about this, really the greatest practical magnification that you can get from a single converging lens is something like four. You're not gonna get much greater than four. So this will get you from four to five. I would say the difference between two and three or three and four, that's significant. And I can't actually demonstrate this to you in the camera because the camera is the one look, you know, uh, collecting this image and sending it to the computer right now, not your eyeball. Your eyeball, um, I don't, you know, could I? Because cameras do focus, but I don't think this one focuses automatically. So I encourage you to get one of these. They're really cheap. Like I said, you can get them from the dollar store and see if you can try these two methods. Um, you'll just have to move the lens back and forth and find the two places where the image comes into focus. But you'll notice that um, when you've placed the object, let's see here, what are, the, what are the two situations? You're going to either put the object at the focal point, that was my original picture, either put it at the focal point or put it inside the focal point. That corresponds to, you know, if you're, let's say I wanna magnify this marker, I could put the magnifying glass so that the marker is at the focal point or put it inside the focal point, which means move the object a little closer. So do this, just put the object far from the lens, bring it towards the lens until you can easily see a magnified sharp image. Then put it a little closer and try to find the second spot where you can bring the image into focus. But you'll notice that that requires your eye to work a little. You'll, you'll feel the difference between your eye being relaxed and your eye focusing. So two different places at which you can produce an image of something using a magnifying glass. And the second case will seem, will look a little bit larger, but it will require some effort on the part of your eye. There's a homework problem pertaining to this and we'll look at that next. The pro, uh, excuse me, the problem I referred to is number 14 in chapter 35. One of you emailed me about this, so I suspect that we're going to find the solutions manual is problematic. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you, are you having trouble reading that? Let me help you out there. Number 14. Whoa, I'm looking at the word magnify through a magnifying glass. That is so meta. We're told that a simple magnifier has a magnification of five times. What they're referring to is the magnification when you use it in the, the normal way where your eye is relaxed and the image is at infinity. Okay, so we're gonna use that fact to find the focal length of this magnifier. But then they say, uh, what you'd like to do is put the image at the near point. In other words, now use a magnifying glass in that second way that we discussed. How, hard, uh, how far should you hold the object from the lens if you want the distance to appear at the near point? And so both methods show up in this problem. Well, the first method of using a simple magnifier that we discussed, in that method, the, the magnification is simply your near point over focal length. And they told us that that magnification is five. So this converging lens is a very well-manufactured lens with the angular magnification. Remember, that's angular magnification of five. And we just go with the standard value of 25 centimeters for the focal length. How easy was that? The focal length evidently solved for F and you get that the focal length is five centimeters. Now that we know the focal length, we can use the thin lens equation. So if I go back to, oh, there's so many papers here. This is 3A stuff, get out of here. Go back to um, the second ray diagram that I drew for using a simple, ha ha, here we go. Now we're going to put the object somewhere between the lens and the focal length, not actually at the focal length. And we want the image to show up here. We just use the thin lens equation. We've got some space right here to do that. They're asking us where to put the object. What we need is S. So I will solve the thin lens equation for S. One over S equals one over F minus one over S prime. Well, that's one over five centimeters. Just keep in mind that we're using centimeters here. Minus one over, and here's where you have to be careful. Here is where the solutions manual goofed. The image distance, remember, is a negative number. 
because it's virtual. We know that the image needs to be at the near point, which is 25 centimeters from the lens. So I need to put a negative 25 here. Uh -huh. So I'm really taking one fifth and adding one twenty-fifth. Well, wouldn't that be five twenty-fifths? That's one fifth plus one twenty-fifth, and that's six twenty-fifths. Okay, so one over s, one of the object distance, is six twenty-fifths. That means that the object distance is, let's just take the reciprocal, what is 25 divided by six? 4.17 centimeters. You need to put the object 4.17 centimeters away from the lens. And note that would still put it inside the focal point. The focal point is five centimeters away from the lens. So that would still produce a virtual image. Your solutions manual too. Here's their solution. I'm sorry, are you having trouble reading it? Let me magnify that for you. Is that good enough? Right about here. See that? They put one over five minus one over positive 25. Oops. That would lead to an object distance of six centimeters. That's no good. Six centimeters would put your object outside the focal point, and then you're not going to get a virtual image. You won't even be able to use this as a magnifying glass. So everybody makes mistakes. Even you, even the people who wrote the solutions, don't feel bad about yourself. Well, at least not for that reason. There's probably other reasons you should feel bad about yourself. Okay, so next up would be to look at how the simple magnifier is used as one element in a compound optical system. And the two that we'll look at, of course, are microscope, in which case this magnifier is used just as the eyepiece, and a telescope, where also the simple magnifier is used as an eyepiece. So you're halfway to understanding how a microscope and a telescope work if you understand how a single converging lens can be used to blow up an object into a virtual image.